All right, so we're going to dive right into the message. Is that okay? You guys ready to dive into God's Word? It's a, it's a little bit different with uh, fewer people here than normal, so y'all are going to have to be really, really loud. And uh, thank you. Uh, Big Al always comes through. And uh, if you're watching online today, again, so glad that you're with us online. Please go ahead and leave comments and uh, feel free to share and join the conversation as we go today. As we talked about, we are starting out 2022. And every year at the beginning of the year, I think it's important for us to pause and to ask Jesus what he wants to do different in our lives moving forward. Um, there's a movie that came out a couple of years ago uh, called um, Finding Nemo. Have you guys, did you guys ever see that movie, Finding Nemo? So uh, on, on Christmas Eve, that's, that's when our family opens presents. And so the girls, they, they tore into all their gifts, and they were excited, and they were having fun. Well, we reserved one gift for the very end, and this is something that we'd been planning on to give them for several months. We were very excited. Um, the last three years, my wife and I have set aside money each year from our tax returns, and uh, we put it aside for the specific purpose of taking our girls on a very special trip. And so uh, the last present they opened on Christmas Eve was this little gift box. Box, and as they opened up, it told them that they were going to get to go to Disney World. And so actually, we're going to be leaving for Disney World this upcoming Sunday. We're going to be gone for a week, and uh, we're really looking forward to this. We know God has blessed us with this opportunity. We've saved up. My wife has planned. We, she's worked really hard to get the airfare and the hotel and all these things as cheap as possible. So we couldn't be more excited. So, all right, well, we'll talk about that. So, uh, in preparation for this, we've told our girls, all right, so this next week we're going to be watching a lot of Disney movies. So I was thinking about um, Finding Nemo. And there's a scene in the movie Finding Nemo that has always cracked me up because the, one of the main characters in the movie, the father, Marlon, he's looking for his little boy, Nemo. And he's beginning to become very frustrated and, and sad that he can't find him. And so Dory, if you, if you remember Dory, Dory is the character who has a lot, she has a very short-term memory. And she can't really remember anything from one moment to the next. And so she gets in Marlon's face and she calls him Grumpy Gills. And she says that the key to getting through life is you just have to keep on swimming. You just got to keep on swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. And she does this little song through the movie. I'm not going to sing it because you don't want to hear that. And I got to thinking about this. And I think a lot of people live their lives according to Dory's advice. Just keep swimming. And sometimes that's not bad advice, right? When things are tough or you're tired or you're not feeling good, you got to just keep moving forward. But I think there's other times, especially times like this, at like the beginning of a year, where that can be bad advice. Because one year transitioning into the next year, that's it, you can't actually feel the difference. Like there's nothing that, there's nothing like the world doesn't stop and then start again. There's nothing like that. It's, it's something that we create in our own minds, this, this transition. However, it is something that, that we recognize. And if we're not intentional about it, it can go by and we just keep doing the same things the same way. So for Dory, if you know the background of her story at all, you know that she lost her parents. And now for a very long time, she's been swimming, trying to find her parents. But following her own advice of just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, she never grew any closer to her goal. In fact, she found herself more and more lost. And I think at times we can get into this place where we're just going through the motions day in and day out. And we're never getting any closer to the goals that we have. We're never drawing any closer to the life that God has for us, but we're just moving forward. And we're doing it mindlessly. We're just doing the same thing that we've always done before, and it's not getting us anywhere good. It's just movement for the sake of movement. Can you guys relate to that at all? That's a very frustrating way to live. And that's not at all what God's intention and plan for us is as his people. So this morning, I want to share with you four P's to prosper 
in 2022. Now, I'm not trying to be cute with the alliteration. It just worked out this way. And I don't normally break things down like this, but I think for, this, for our purpose this morning, it's going to be helpful. Four Ps to help you prosper in 2022. And I'll share those four Ps from you right from the beginning. The four Ps are pause, pray, plan, and proceed. So this morning, I want you to pause, pray, plan, and then proceed. But the issue is, most of us do this the opposite way, right? And that's what we're going to look at this morning. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, we're going to talk about Adam and Eve's sons, Cain and Abel. Now, I know that this is a story many people are familiar with. I know this is a, a favorite of one of our elders, Sean. This is a, a favorite story of his that he shared from the platform a couple of different times. But I want to take a look at how this fits into this idea of pausing, praying, planning, and proceeding. Here we go. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. Now, if you don't understand what the word to know means in this context, it, uh, it means sexual relations, right? This is, this is how they would, this was the type of wording that they would use to describe a man and a wife coming together for the purpose of having children. Well, this isn't part of the sermon, but let me just say this real quick. For a lot of you, this is going to help you to have a better 2021. Um, God has a plan and a way for, for these things to happen. So a lot of people's lives get messed up because they want to do the knowing before the marrying. You guys know what I'm talking about? But in God's purpose and plan, it's you get married first, and, know, and then you can know each other as much as you want to know each other. But if you want God to bless what you have, get married and then enjoy the knowing. Amen? Enough said? All right, we'll, we'll leave that right there. So Adam and Eve, they have a baby named Cain, and Eve gives the credit to God. Verse 2 says, and again, she bore his brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a worker of the ground. So at this point in human history, sin has now entered into the world. So things are not perfect the way that they used to be. Now there's actual effort and labor that goes into having to get your food, to work for a living. So these two brothers are both farmers, but they have a different focus. Cain, he's more about crops, right? He's raising plants. His brother Abel is more of a shepherd. He's raising flocks. Both of these are perfectly good occupations. Both of these have the same potential to be a blessing to their lives, to, to be something that God would give his stamp of approval on. God is going to be equally happy with both of these guys doing the work that they're doing. But let's look at verse 3. It says, In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. Now, it's kind of hard to pick this up just from that short of a description, but we'll, we'll infer this as we go on. But Cain, Cain's a busy guy. Any of you guys in here busy? I mean, the Christmas season, it can be incredibly busy, right? You've got all the family stuff going on, all the parties, you got the gifts, you got everything in life. It's just crazy. Now we're at the beginning of the year and we're looking at the whole year that's in front of us. And a lot of us, all we're thinking is, oh my goodness, think about all the stuff there is to do coming up. Work, 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 work. Well, you have Cain, and Cain's a busy guy, and he's trying to get the crops, and you know what? There's not a lot of other human beings around to help him do this, so a lot of this work is on his own. So he's out there, and he's busting it every day. He's hustling, and he's trying to make it work. Now, he knows that he needs to give God something back in return, that he needs to give an offering of thanksgiving, an offering of recognition to God. But because he's so busy, Cain simply gives whatever he has available, whatever's lying around, he brings that to the Lord. Verse 4 says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, 
But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. So what happened here? What, what was actually going on? Well, it tells us that Abel brought a different kind of offering from his brother. It wasn't because Cain brought plants and Abel brought meat, although I got to be honest with you, I'm going to like one of those much more than the other, right? If you ever show up to a party with me like Mike Haggard did one time and bring a, a, a veggie tray, you can just go right back home. You don't, you don't even need to come inside. But if uh, you bring like chicken wings and, and ribs and maybe some pork chops or something like that, some fried chicken, you come on in and you're going to be my best friend, right? Because everybody would rather have some good meat than vegetables. And I'm sorry if you're a vegetarian, but that's just weird, okay? I'm, I'm just, no, 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 you do your thing, but I, I like the meat. But that's not what this was about here. It wasn't because God preferred chicken wings over Brussels sprouts. It was the attitude behind the offering. You see, there's two things that this tells us. It says Abel brought of the firstborn. In other words, Abel brought the first fruits. This is a principle from this point in Scripture that God says and tells us is very important. Offering God our first fruits. Well, what is a first fruit? Well, a first fruit is you take of the first that comes to you. So let's say uh, a, a principle that we can connect this to would be tithing, like Donna talked about this morning. So when we tithe, we don't give our tithe after all of our bills are paid. We give of the first fruits. So we take the first 10% that we get and we give that to the Lord. And then from the rest of the 90, we pay our bills and we, we live our lives and we do all the other stuff that we need to do. In this instance, Abel took the firstborn of his flocks. So what does a first fruit signify? A first fruit signifies priority, but it also signifies trust. So what Abel was saying was, God, you're my number one priority. I'm going to give you the firstborn of my flocks, and I'm going to trust you that as I give you the firstborn, that you're going to provide many other to follow. Because that's kind of nerve-wracking, right? I mean, let's say you make $500 a week, and you've got $450 worth of bills, and you're like, okay, Lord, I want to trust you with that that first $50, but I'm a little bit nervous that, you know, maybe something's going to go wrong with my tires. Maybe I'm going to need a little bit of extra gas money. You know, maybe uh, something's going to happen and I'm going to get a little bit be far behind. So God, I'm just going to take this $50. I'm just going to set it back here to the side. And then I'm going to make sure everything plays out this month. And then if I still have the 50 at the end of the month, then I'll give it to you. Is that trust? No, that's not trust. The first fruit says, okay, God, I'm going to give it to you right out of the gate, and I'm going to trust that you're going to take care of everything else moving forward. So he gives God the first fruits. Guys, it's, it's the very beginning of the January. It's the very beginning of 2022. We have an opportunity to give God our first fruits today moving forward. And we're going to talk about how we can do that. The second thing it says is that he gave also of their fat portions. The fat portions, that just signifies the best quality. So no, not only was he prioritizing God as the most important thing, but he was also saying, I'm going to give you the best that I have to offer. Cain gave what he had, what was laying around, what was convenient, what was easy in the moment. Cain's busy. He's got a lot of stuff going on. He's just trying to keep his head above water. He's got crops coming. He's got to do all these things. He's got to make sure everybody's where they're at, where they're supposed to be. But Abel says, no, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to wait, and I'm going to give God the best that I have to give. So let's go back to our four Ps, and let's look at how this plays out here. So Cain proceeds forward. He gives an offering to the Lord, but he doesn't really think through it. Then there's this, there's a plan. 
So he's like, all right, I got to give an offering. What do I got laying around here? Okay, I can get some corn here and some beans and uh, maybe some carrots and uh, whatever. What do, what do I got laying around? Okay, and I'll grab this. So he, he gets, he proceeds, he moves forward with action. He wants to do something. He doesn't really plan. He just kind of throws it together as he goes. And then he has this interaction with God, which we would call prayer. But God's not very happy. So then he pauses. The problem is that he waits to pause until the end. And the pause happens because he realizes that God isn't happy with what he's doing. And then he feels sorry for himself. Some of you guys are paused this morning. And you're paused. And this is Donna's illustration this morning was great because what God did for Donna was he gave her a reason to pause this week. And he gave her a reason to pause because there was something that was out of alignment in her life that he wanted to get back into alignment. Abel did it the opposite way. Abel paused and said, okay, I'm really busy. I got cows having babies and we got sheep coming out of our ears and we got all this stuff going on. But I need to stop for a moment because I want to make sure God is number one. I want to make sure he's my top priority and I want to make sure he gets the best. So I'm going to pause and then I'm going to prayerfully consider, okay, what's the best offering that I can give to the Lord? I'm not just going to give of whatever sheep I have or whatever cows I have or whatever, whatever's lying around. No, I'm going to give God the first because I trust him. And then I'm going to give him the best because he's worth the best. And then I'm going to proceed forward. Do you guys see the difference here? Abel had the regard of God because he did things the right way. He paused, he prayed, then he planned, and then he proceeded forward. You will only prosper this year if you will take this time at the beginning of the year and you will make a decision, you'll be intentional about how the rest of the year is going to work. Have you ever noticed that when you have a plan, things seem to work out? But when you go into things just, just erratically, just trying to go with the flow, things often get out, of, get, off, get out of direction pretty fast. Have you guys noticed that in your life? But if you go into something with a plan, now that doesn't mean that plans can't get broken or messed up. But if you go into something and you're like, all right, so this is what I'm going to do. If I go into a restaurant and let's say, you know, now it's, it's resolution season, right? How many of you guys have broken your eating resolutions already this year? Anybody? Like, all right, I'm going to eat really healthy. I'm going to be super healthy. Um, Rob, you know, you know, this time of year, going to the gym, it's miserable. Like the first week of January at the gym is crazy because everybody and their brother's in there. They're trying to get rid of the holiday weight that they put on, and they're making all these false promises to themselves that they're going to be there every single day. Well, they make two or three workout sessions, and then they're sore, and they're tired, and they never go back the rest of the year. But people go, so let's say you're in resolution mode, and you're like, all right, I got to lose these 15 unwanted pounds, and I'm going to go to the restaurant, and I'm going to do super well. And you get into the restaurant, what do you do? You sit around, and everybody gets their menus out, and then you start smelling the food. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm looking at the salads, but I'm, I'm smelling the pasta. <laughs> I'm looking at the salads, but I'm, I'm smelling the cheeseburger and the unlimited fries at Red Robin. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I know the salad was a good idea, but, you know, they just ordered chicken wings, and, and they ordered the manicotti, and, and they ordered the steak, and all right, I'm going to start next Monday, okay? But let's say you go into the restaurant, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to get a chicken Caesar with light dressing. And that's what I'm going to have. I'm going to get the chicken Caesar salad. And you sit down, the waitress comes, she's like, hey, uh, would everybody, does everybody know what they would like? Yes, I will go first. I'm going to get the chicken Caesar salad. And while you're saying it, part of you is dying, but you're dying to yourself. And then everybody else orders, and then the food comes, and you have your chicken Caesar salad. And is, it, are you as maybe happy as you would be if you would have gotten the cheeseburger? Not in that moment, but you've accomplished something. But the only reason you accomplish it is because you had a plan. So at the beginning of 2022, you need to pause today. And you need to pray. You need to ask Jesus, Jesus, what is it that you want to change in my life this year? 
What is it that you want to be different in me by the end of this year? And then you need to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to give you a plan. But if all you do is pray and then try to proceed, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you pray and you allow the Holy Spirit to give you a plan, to give you action steps towards your goal, then you can begin to proceed forward. And if you're not writing this down, you probably should be because you need a plan. You need to ask the Holy Spirit right now today, Lord, what is my plan going to be for 2022? Cain did not have a plan. Abel came up with a plan and God looked at his offering and had regard for it. You know what that means? He was pleased. God looked at Abel's offering and he was like, that's what I'm talking about. That was well thought out. You prioritized me. You gave me your best. He looked at Cain's offering and he was like, I mean, it's something, right? But I wasn't your priority. That's not the best that you had to offer. So no, I'm going to, I'm going to put my stamp of approval on Abel, but on you, I don't really have anything. Well, Cain became angry. Why did Cain get angry? He was defensive. Have you ever been called out on something and you know that you were wrong, but you doubled down on it instead? Better yet, anybody in here have kids? And you're like, hey, did I tell you to do that? Yeah, but, yeah, but, or have you ever called someone out and they get really mad at you and they try to make it your problem and they try to make it your fault? You know what that's called? That's, that's, uh, that's called guilt. That person is, is guilty and their insecurities are showing. But you know, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us the things that are out of alignment in our lives. But just like Cain, we often will hear these things. You know, the Word of God is alive and active. God wants to speak to us from His Word. But sometimes God speaking to us, it brings conviction and it shows us that we're not doing things his way. And we have two choices. We can either surrender to that and humble ourselves and say, Lord, I missed it. Help me to do better. Or we can do what Cain did and become defensive and bitter. And there's a lot of people in the church, a lot of people running around today that are defensive and they're bitter because they're not doing things God's way but they're mad about not getting God's blessing. Abel walked in the blessing of God because he submitted to God's purpose and plan. Cain wasn't willing to do that, and it says that his face fell. Well, you know what that means? It means that his attitude changed. You ever been around with somebody with a fallen face, with a bad attitude? Well, a person with a fallen face, they walk around and they know someone's to blame, but they just know that everyone else is that someone. So, their finances are a disaster. They can't stay in a healthy relationship. Their kids are a mess. You know, their cars broke down, whatever. And it's everyone else's fault. And you'll say to them, but yeah, but, you know, didn't, uh, didn't you? Yeah, but I did that because this happened and this person did this and this person said this and, and, and this was out of my control. But what about all the things that are in your control? I think about uh, a doctor's visit that I went to a number of years ago. And it was, it was kind of embarrassing because this doctor started lining out for me all the reasons I was having these, these physical issues. And I was trying so hard to come up with, it in my mind, excuses for why it wasn't my problem, why it was somebody else's problem. I mean, we can sue McDonald's today, right, for making us fat. It, everything else is everyone else's issue. It doesn't belong to me. Cain was trying to make it God's problem, and God wasn't having it. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Now, entreat or seek after the favor of God, that he may be gracious to us. With such a gift from your hand, will he show favor to any of you, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, that there were one among you who would shut the doors, that you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations. And in every place, incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane my name, 
when you say that the Lord's table is, provo- is polluted, and its fruit, that is, its food, may be despised. But you say, well, what a weariness this is. And you snort at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence or what is lame and sick, and you bring that as your offering. Shall I accept that from your hand, says the Lord? Cursed be the cheat who has a male in his flock and vows it, but yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name shall be feared among the nations. Did you hear a repeated phrase in there? Three or four times God says in this passage, my name will be feared. My name will be revered. My name will be respected. Does God demand our best? Absolutely. But it is his right to demand that. God is the creator of heaven and earth. God is the king of kings. God is the Lord of lords. God is above all things. So it is his right to say to us, you need to give me your best. But in response, God gives us himself, which is the best of anything that there is. God says, you owe me your best. I don't owe you anything, but I will give you everything in response but you got to give me the best. So what he's, what he's angry about here is he's saying to Israel, man, you guys are making a mockery of me. You, you claim to know me. You, you know how to say the right things. You know how to put on the right clothes. You know how to go to the right places. But when it actually comes time to give me something, you, you give whatever, whatever's convenient, whatever's easy, or you, you just give whatever's damaged and broken. Let me, let me give you an illustration here that might uh, help this to sink in a little bit more clearly today. So I've got two bottles of water up here. Um, one bottle of water is, is unopened, never, never been drank out of. The other one, well, um, I passed it around in uh, the preschool to a, a couple of uh, four and five-year-olds, all right? Now, if you've ever had four or five-year-olds, you know that there's one rule that comes to to sharing a drink. You never share a drink with a four or five-year-old, right? You always make sure that you get the first drink out of the drink, and then you hand it to them, and you say, this now belongs to you. Do you know why? Because four and five-year-olds backwash. Whatever's in their mouth. So I'm looking in here, and I got some cracker, and uh, there's a half of a goldfish head. And it looks like there's a couple pieces of some fruit snacks. And uh, there might even be a Cheeto floating around in there. Anybody want to drink? Anybody want to drink? No, that's disgusting. You don't want to drink after a child has had your glass because you don't know what's going to end up in your mouth. God says, this is what I deserve. This is what you're offering me. You want to give me the leftovers of what you've already used, what you've already processed through. You want to give me your backwash? You want to give me the junk that's, that's left over at the bottom of the glass? No, no, no. I want the first drink. I want the best that you have to offer. And we're like, but God, this, this is what's easy. You, you can have a drink of this. I'm going to open this up for myself. I'm going to keep this for me. And God says, then you can keep your offering. This is Abel. This is Cain. What are you going to offer to Jesus this year? You give, you're going to give him the first and the best? Are you going to give him the backwash of your life? Because he's not interested in this. But a lot of us, this is all we're prepared to give. The story continues in Genesis 4, 6. It says, The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. 
In James chapter 4, 17, it says, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, to him it is sin. Here's the issue. If you're just swimming and swimming and swimming and moving and going from one day to the next and one day to the next, and you're not taking the time to pause, to pray, and to plan before you proceed, this is all you're ever going to offer to Jesus. This is all your life is ever going to have to offer to Jesus. But if you're willing to say, okay, Lord, I really want to know what you have for me in 2022. I want to give you the first fruits. I want to give you the first drink. I want to give you the best that I have to offer this year. Then you got to pause today. And you got to ask the Holy Spirit to give you a plan that you can begin to put in place so that you can begin to proceed forward into this year knowing how to live out his purpose and plans for your, for your life. And you might think, well, you know what? That's, that's, easy for, that's easy for you to say because maybe you have better things to offer than I do. And that's the lie that Satan wants to get into our heads. It's this game of comparison. Because I might look at Dan Murphy's life, and you know what? Dan Murphy, he's a man of the Word. And Dan spends time every single day in the Word. I bet Dan spends a lot of time in the Word every single day. And I might say, well, you know what? Dan's spending an hour a day in prayer and in the Word. I don't have an hour a day to be in the prayer, to be in prayer and to be in the Word. Okay, well, maybe your best is 10 minutes. Are you willing to give him that? Are you willing to give God your best 10 minutes of your day to pray and to read? For somebody else, it's going to be 25 minutes. For somebody else, it's going to be an hour. Maybe for somebody else, it's going to be two hours. You don't compare. It's what is your best to give. That's what God is after. In Luke 21, 1, it says, Jesus looked up and he saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on. It's not quantity. It's quality. God wants your first, and he wants your best. But he's going to look at what your first and what your best look like. He's not going to look at somebody else. He's not going to compare you to somebody else. All God cares about is your heart. If you give God your best, you can trust him with the rest. I know that sounds a little bit, you know, like a little, like a little saying, but you know what? Get that into your head. If you give God your best, you can trust him with the rest. But if you give God this, you can expect this in return. You can expect to get the backwash of life. And that's not a fun place to be. That's not something that you want. But if you will give God this, you will get this in return. Because that's the way God operates. We reap what we sow. In John 10.10 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. You know where the abundance of life comes from? It comes from planning. It comes from having a plan by the Holy Spirit. But if all you do today is you walk out of here and you're like, God, I want to give you my best. I want to give you my first. But that's where you stop. You're never going to get there. No, you actually have to allow the Holy Spirit to show you the things that he wants to implement in your life this year. And I don't know what that's going to look like. For some of you, God wants you to begin to read your Bible more. And like I said, that might be five minutes a day. That might be 10 minutes a day. For some of you, he wants you to begin to pray more. Some of you need to join a small group this year and begin to have fellowship with other believers. Some of you need to start going to guys' night and girls' night. Some of you need to be a part of outreaches this year and start sharing Jesus. You need to start sharing your faith at work. I don't know what the Holy Spirit's laying on your heart. He might be talking to you about your finances. He might be talking to you about your physical health or your attitudes or your marriage, whatever it might be. The Holy Spirit will show you if you will pause and you will pray. And then he will begin to give you that plan so that you can proceed. Jesus wants you to live abundantly, but abundance is found within the plans of God. 
to give God your best and to prioritize giving him your best also requires planning. Okay, so don't mess this up. This does not mean that you have to wake up every morning three hours before you go to work and just read your Bible and pray the whole time. Because maybe that's not your best time of day. Now, I think it's a good practice to put God at the beginning because that way you know that you're going to get that time with him. But if you're not a morning person and you're just like a walking zombie for the first two hours of your day, that's not your best time. So what you want to do is you want to pray and you want to plan. You want to ask yourself questions like, okay, God, what's the best time of my day that I can spend with you regularly? Maybe it's on your lunch break. Maybe it's right after you go to work. Maybe it's right before you go to work. Maybe you're one of those people that it's right before you go to bed. I don't know what's best for you. Only the Holy Spirit can show that to you. But you ask him right now, Lord, what's the best time of my day that I can give to you? And then what's the best things that I can do for you? Lord, show me, how much, what do you want me to do in that time? Where do you want me to begin reading this year? What do you want me to pray about? What do you want my relationship with you to look like in 2022? In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 through 10, it says, If you will honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your produce, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. This is a promise. And here's the promise of God to you in 2022. Do you guys like prosperity? I like prosperity. This verse is about prosperity. You want to know God's promise for prosperity in 2022? If you will honor the Lord with your wealth, that means your money, and with the first fruits of all of your produce, I mean, that's, that's your resources, that's your time, that's your energy, that's your mind, that's, that's the whole of you, not just part of you. God wants all of you. If you will honor God with your best and with your first, then you will have plenty and you'll be bursting at the seams. Do you want that? I want that for you. I want that for me. But the way that we get plenty, the way that we burst at the seams in life is to give God the first and the best. But the only way that we can achieve that is if we're willing to pause, we're willing to pray, we're willing to plan, and then we proceed. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we thank you for your word. And as we move into 2022, God, would you please, would you please speak to us right now? Would you speak to our hearts? about what it is that you want to change in us this year? What is it that you want to look different? What are the things that we can begin to implement by the power of your Holy Spirit? Lord, give us a plan. Give us some action steps to be able to move forward into, into your will, deeper into your purposes for our lives. Lord, as we pause right now to consider, please show us Help us, Lord, not to just keep swimming, not to just keep going around the mountain, not to just keep going through the motions. Lord, we don't want to give you the backwash. We want to give you the best because that's who you are in our lives. You are the best part of our lives. And we want to give you the best part of us in response. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we're going to take a few minutes this morning, and we're just going to enter into a time of prayer. Carla's going to come, and she's just going to kind of lightly play in the background, but we want to pray over 2022, and, and I'm just going to give you some, some things that we're going to pray for. Um, one of the things that we're going to pray for are the people who are sick. You guys know anybody who's sick right now? I, I got text messages this morning about people going to the ER and people being at home sick, so we're going to pray for the sick. Um, we're going to pray for our church that God would give us a, a move of the Holy Spirit this year, that God would bring people in this year. Um, God would help us to make disciples, build relationships, and make him known. Um, we also want to pray for our community. We want to pray for Rock Island and the Quad Cities. We want to pray over our, our, our leaders. 
We want to pray over our schools. And uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's some crazy crime going on right here in the Quad Cities. A friend of mine had their car stolen this week in a very, very nice neighborhood. It's happening everywhere. We want to pray for our nation. I don't know about you, but I've got some concerns. So again, we want to pray for our leaders. We, we want to pray for this economy. We, we want to pray for what's going on in the culture. We want to pray that people's hearts would turn back to Jesus. And then we want to pray for the, the big C church around the world, our persecuted brothers and sisters, and that the message of the gospel would continue to grow and that the return of Jesus would come quickly. Amen? So as we, as we pray, I want to invite you to come up and uh, come up on the stage and, and grab the mic and uh, just pray as the Holy Spirit leads you. We're going to take about 15 minutes and just pray through this list. So just as the Spirit leads, you're, you're invited to come up here and, and pray however the Holy Spirit leads. I'll, I'll start us off. Well, Father, I thank you that your word says that there is healing in the atonement, that there is healing in what Jesus accomplished on the cross, that by his stripes we are healed, but that healing is for our spirits, the removing of sin, but it's also for our souls, our minds, our wills, and our emotions, and it's also for our physical bodies. And so, Lord, I thank you for healing in your people. And I pray for those that are within this, this family here at Word of Life. Lord, I, I pray uh, just off the top of my head this morning, I pray for, for Joyce, and I pray for, for Sarah, I pray for Darwin, I pray for Riley. I pray for all of those, Lord, who are dealing with, with COVID and, and the flu and colds and, and allergies. I pray for those dealing with, with cancer, diabetes, for those with other ailments, bone spurs in their heels. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would touch their bodies and that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead would touch them. And I pray, Lord, that your body would be strengthened and made whole. I thank you for healing them, Lord. I thank you for moving because you get all the credit. You get all the glory. In Jesus' name. Father, I just thank you that your light destroys the darkness. Last year, the, the world wanted us to focus on the darkness of disease and corruption and hate. The world wanted us to focus on the darkness of disunity, not just, not just in humanity, but in your church. I pray, Lord, this morning that your light would destroy that darkness and that we would see nothing but your light as a church moving forward this year that the divisions would crumble in the brightness of that glorious holy light that you would bring us together in your light as one as one church worldwide Father I lift up our brothers and sisters in Africa especially this morning that are being killed because they want to show you or want to show the world your light. When I just thank you for the bravery of these men and women who stand face to face with this darkness and they are unyielding because they have so much faith in you. I pray that we have that faith here in the United States where we we have it so easy compared to these nations in the world that that want to stomp on our brothers and sisters who mean nothing but good for you. Father, let your light burn the darkness from our lives, from our communities, from the governments and the politics 
and the power hungry, let your light shine so bright that we don't have any other choice but to see you in Jesus' name. Lord, Father, I, I thank you for all that you allowed us to do in 2021. I thank you for uh, the abundance that, that we received, the, the way that we were able to give so, so freely to all of these different uh, missions and organizations throughout the year, Lord. And I ask that, that we're able to, to give more this year. I ask that we are able to reach out to, to so many more communities outside of our own, Lord, that, that we are able to pour the blessings of, of this church into, into the rest of your kingdom, Lord. I, I thank you that, that we've been given those opportunities, and I, I thank you for the opportunities that will arise. I ask for just I don't know, more opportunity for growth, Lord. 2021 was was so great for for this building and so great for our our, our leadership as, as a whole to to grow and to to bring glory to your name i ask for for more of that in 2022 i ask that that we're able to to continue to grow that we're able to to shape and mold this community around us to look a little more like heaven lord i ask that that we are able to just pour pour your love out of this place, that it, that it overfills this building, and you feel your light down the street, that you feel it all across Rock Island, that you feel it throughout the Quad Cities. I thank you for all of these things that you're doing, and all of the things that, that we don't know yet, Lord. I, I thank you for all of these. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for what you have in store for Word of Life Church this year. Lord, as Sean said, that, that we would be that city on a hill, that light shining into the darkness. And I pray, Lord, that we would make your name synonymous in our community with love and with hope and with joy and with goodness. Holy Spirit, we invite you to invade our lives and our church this year. Lord, that you would shake our foundations, that we would not be the same, Lord, that we would be different at the end of 2022, that we would look more like you, that we would sound more like you, that we would be closer, Lord, to your intentions and plans for us. And Lord, I pray that you would bring growth to this church. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would see Acts chapter 2 uh, living in our midst. Lord, that that we would pursue you and seek after you and that every day people would come and they would be added, Lord. That, Lord, lives would be transformed, souls would be saved, people would be set free, healed, and delivered. And that, Lord, people would be, people would be drawn into relationship with you. Lord, you've called us to make disciples. I pray you would bless the growth track this year. I pray, Lord, that dozens, that hundreds would come through the growth track. Father, I pray that you would help us in building relationships or that we would be unified together. Lord, that we would love one another, that we would do life together and that our, that our small groups would flourish, that they would multiply. And I pray, Lord, that our men's and women's ministries, Lord, would, would grow, Lord, that they would thrive as, as men and women um, encourage each other. And Father, I pray that you would show us how to do outreach this year. Help us to build upon previous efforts. And I pray, Lord, that we would make you known in our community better than ever before. Lord, that we would shine your light in Rock Island and the Quad Cities and people would be drawn to that light to salvation. And I ask you, Lord, that you would bless this church, that your hand would rest upon us. Lord, that we would teach your word. Lord, that, that we would proclaim your name, that we would worship you. Lord, that we would praise you, give you the honor that is due your name. And I pray, Lord, that we would do your will. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that we would, uh, as, a, as a body, as a church, we would 
just continue to seek you and, and pour out our praise to you, Lord, and just thank you to be so grateful for who you are, Lord, to see you. As, as Even though we'll never know the fullness of who you are, Lord, to see how great you are and how great you are to be praised and to, to continue to, to have that attitude of thankfulness, of gratefulness, that we would look towards you, and, Lord, that we would not lean on our own, on our own understanding, but we would lean on you in every way. And, Lord, I thank you that as, as we see the things that are going on around us, well, actually, I, I pray that you open our eyes to what's going on around us, that we would have ears to hear, but we would not be discouraged, we would not be distressed, but we would continue to keep our focus on you and that we would put our trust on you, in, to, in you. And, Lord, I thank you that that there's so much going on right now across the world that I've never seen anything like this, where we're going towards a, a moving fast towards a, a, what would appear to be a, a one world governance or maybe even a cashless society. And Lord, I pray that you are preparing us as we're seeing places that are, are uh, ch Christians are being persecuted and, and murdered. Lord, that we understand that these things will happen, but if we keep our eyes open, that we can protect ourselves and we can protect those around us by clinging to you Jesus these things may come but if we keep our focus on you we could walk right into your presence Lord as the stones are being cast at us seeing you at the right hand of the father and knowing that we've we've done what you've called us to do so, Lord, I think we may come into some tough times coming into this next year, but I pray that we keep our eyes on you and we'll see that those things don't matter. This life is but a, 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 a wisp, but a vapor. We need to keep our focus and our eyes on you and to be thankful in all things and to be prayerful. And, Lord, I thank you that as we do that, we're going to see something that's much greater than what this world has to offer anyway. But, Lord, I thank you that as we're doing that, we're going to be bringing more and more people into that, into this. And, Lord, that those people that are going along right now may be in fear. They're looking for the things of the world to satisfy, that they're going to suddenly have their eyes opened to what's going on. And they're going to say, mm -mm, doesn't scare me, doesn't bother me. I'm not afraid of this. I'm not afraid of what's going to happen. I don't care about those things as long as I keep my focus on you. And, Lord, that's what I want to see us do. Keep our focus on you. Put our trust in you. And, Lord, I thank you that, that no matter what Satan's got, what he plans he's got, those things, are, those things will happen eventually. But, Lord, as far as for us, that we would, we would do what you've called us to do and that we would bring many to come to know the truth through our boldness and through our steadfastness and through our ability even in the, in the hard things that we might face. Just as I, I see the example of, of, of Sarah Mitchell time after time, as she comes up here and she pours out her praise. Lord, let us be like that. Let us, not comparing to one another, but let us, even if we're going right through the middle of something, that we just praise your name, Jesus, because you are great to be praised in Jesus' name. Um, I want I want to play for my mom friend. <laughs> he, he got he cried he died yesterday. Oh, he he heart attack. Well, Father, we pray for this family and for the friends and everybody that's been affected. Lord God, we don't understand why these things happen, but Father, we pray for your peace and for your comfort to come into this situation, into their lives. And I pray, Lord, through this, that you would draw hearts to yourself, that your love and your faithfulness would be shown. I pray that you would give strength and renew hope and I pray, Lord, that as only you can, that good would be brought out in the midst of suffering and pain. Jesus, wrap your arms around them and draw them to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Make sure it's on. Um, 
Father, this last year I have seen people come and I have seen people go. Lord, and when I think about the reasons why they go or why they stop coming, Lord, many times it's because they look at others and they measure themselves according to them and they see themselves as failures. Lord, I pray that you open their eyes to the gifts that you have laid upon them, Lord, and that you help them to see that they are not the others and that you have a different calling, a different plan, and a different purpose for their life. Help them, Lord, to live in the moment, to live in you in the moment, that no matter where we go or what we do, we do it with you in mind. Lord, as we're walking along, if we see somebody who needs prayer, that we pray for them, whether we go approach them in prayer or whether we just pray in passing. Lord, there are many ways for people to be used, many ways for us to rise up in the moment. We don't have to spend hours like many other people in prayer or in reading the word, but your word is with us continually. And I thank you for that word rising up within us this year and each and every one of us to do what, Lord, what you want us to accomplish to do. Show them, Lord, show them how to live their life as a successful child of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just rejoice in another year that you've given us. Lord, we enter this year with thanksgiving and praise, and we remember, remember all the things that you've done in our lives, how you've transformed us, how you've lifted us up from the depths of depression and sickness, and you've restored us. Lord, we just praise you today. Lord, we remember, this is a time to remember, remember our first love. It's time to come back to our first love. It's time to lay everything down at the, the foot of the cross. This is, this is the year of the, the, uh, that the power of the Holy Spirit is to be experienced in the church. The church, it's time to wake up. The church is waking up. We are entering into the third great awakening. It's time. It's time. It's time for the, the gathering in of the, 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 the masses when they come back to Jesus and we, we see the power of God manifest. It starts with us individually. And it starts in the word of God. The word of God is alive and it's powerful and it, it's sharp as a two-edged sword. It's there. It's alive and it will change life. There's an effortless change that takes place if you put the effort out. We need to stop looking at what we don't have, the lack, and realize what we do have, the greatness that we have. All these things have been given to us as a gift. A gift. All we need to do is receive. Receive the Holy Spirit today. Receive the power of God today. Receive salvation today. Receive de deliverance today. Everything is available to you. God wants you to have it. He wants you to have it more than you want it. He loves you greater, far greater than you can even begin to conceive. But this is a time for us all to lay it all down. Time is short. But we have to remember we are eternal beings. We can make a difference. We are his hands and his feet. We are his mouthpiece. The power of God resides in us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead re resides in our spirit today. It's time to release it. It's time to receive what God has already given. It's already there. We need to accept it. So Lord, let us take all these things that you want us to have and grasp them. You want us to have them. There is like a, a treasure trove of things just hanging over our head that we just need to grab. So help us to grab the goodness of God today. 
Because the goodness of God leads to salvation. It leads to deliverance. It leads to health. It leads to all things good in God. So I look forward to 2022. This is the year of the Lord. This is the year of the church. This is the year of the power is coming back to the church. We praise you today. We worship you. We adore you with all our hearts. We lay it all down for you, Jesus. We praise you today in Jesus' name. Father God, I want to lift up our loved ones right now. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you bring them back. Let your purpose be fulfilled in their lives. Reveal to them truths. Speak your truth into their hearts. I pray that you send people into their lives who can minister to them, give them eyes to see, ears to hear. Father God, I command the enemy to take his hands off of our loved ones in the name of Jesus. And I pray for them to come in, come in quickly, and, and for them to just know, give them that knowing. The ones who are being stubborn right now and refusing to walk in your ways, Father God, remind them of who you are. And the ones who are raised up in your word and in your ways, Father God, you said that they would return. And I'm, I'm, I'm calling out right now that they have to return in the name of Jesus. I'm standing in the gap as your faithful child that, that you're hearing my prayer right now for them that they will come back to you. They will serve their purpose on this earth as you've planned and prepared for them. That any time they walk in disobedience, Father God, that they're not going to have any peace because the only way they're going to have that is through you and that they're going to be reminded of who you are. Open their eyes so that they can just look around and see very clearly the truths that are happening, what's really true and what's not. That any type of sin just doesn't set well. They, they start to hate the sin. As a matter of fact, God, help us all to hate sin, to not be comfortable in sin, to despise sin, but to walk so strongly and want what the things of you are. And I thank and praise you that I'm in my mind imagining certain faces walking in the door right now that we're going to see this year our children who are lost, our parents, our grandchildren, our friends. Give them a yearning. Give them a hunger, a hunger like they've never felt. Then now is the time for them to come forward and to not be comfortable, not to be comfortable in the world standards and the way that they're walking now. And I thank you for that. I know you're faithful. I know you're faithful. I see them coming in now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, I thank you that you're calling your um, church to be united, whether they agree or disagree, but they can agree that you died for them, and on that, they stand together, Lord. I thank you for drawing everybody up and giving them back their boldness to speak and not to be ashamed of who you are, but to boast in it, Father, and that they will stand strong and they, they will call their friends and family back, Father, and that you will make them strong and that, um, that the world will turn and look and see that we are bold and that we have a fellowship and then they want to draw near to us because they want to see um, who it is or what it is that is in us that makes us the way that we are when the world is in chaos and that we just have peace and that um, they will learn that you are a peace and that they will gravitate towards you, Father. And I thank you, Father, for um, helping us to just um, be examples to the world and showing them how to live and showing them that, um, that you don't have to do what the world is doing and that just to live in a life of submission. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Father, I thank you that you hear us. Jesus, I thank you that you intercede on our behalf. Lord, let 2022 be a year of change. I pray that you would bring change to the Quad Cities. Lord, that salvation would come to the Quad Cities. That we would not be known as the 15th post-Christian community in the country 
But Lord, I pray that the truth of Jesus would open eyes and open ears, that hearts would be open to receive. I pray that your church would become more active, more vibrant, more loud, more influential. And I ask you, Lord, that you would bring transformation to our Quad Cities. I pray for leaders that their hearts would be convicted, that corruption would be exposed. And I pray, Lord, that you would protect our schools, our students. I pray, Lord God, that the truth of your word would become a standard, that the lies of the enemy would be cast down. I pray for this nation, Lord, that as we come into this election cycle, Lord, I pray that good would prevail, that truth would win. I pray that light would cast out the darkness. And I pray that your will would be done in this country. And I pray for our leaders. I pray for President Biden, for Kamala Harris. I pray for the Supreme Court, for the House and the Senate. I pray for our governors. Lord, that you would speak to their hearts, and I pray that they would respond. I pray, Lord, that the people of this nation would grow fed up with lies and deceit, and that, Lord, through voting, Lord, through the truth being proclaimed, that those who would seek to stand against you would be cast down and cast to the side. And I pray that you would raise up those who would be heralds for the truth and good. Lord, we need you to heal our land. We need you to heal our community. We need you to heal our marriages and our children and our families. Help us, Lord, to give you the first fruits of 2022. Help us, Lord, to prioritize you and to give you the best. 